This is a short video on reinforcement learning for traffic signal control. This is a domain survey by Sayathan Datta. This picture is a common scene at all modern day cities. We have lots of traffic on road and due to improper traffic management systems, we end up with a lot more. Here in this picture, we even see that there is a roadwork construction ahead sign which adds to the traffic problem. In this video, we showcase how to use reinforcement learning to model the problem of traffic congestion. Furthermore, we show how to monitor and mitigate on the traffic situation. We introduce several reinforcement learning methods and hint on their performance. This also serves as a foundation for further investigation. The current traffic controllers are either pre-timed control or actuated control systems. Pre-timed control systems have a preset of timings on green light, a longer green light duration during peak hours, and a shorter duration during afternoons or late nights. Unfortunately, it fails to handle dynamic traffic conditions like that of a football match across the city during afternoons. Next is actuated control systems, which is responsive to dynamic traffic, but does not really serve well in long-term traffic scenarios. Now we come to the technical jargons of a traffic controller. The first we have cycle length. Cycle length is the interval to complete the cycle of red, amber, and green, uh, such as the example shown in the shown below. The next is traffic phase. Traffic phase is a combination of green lights in a certain intersection, which allows flow of traffic from one side of the road to another. It may be across the junctions or to different roads. It is allocated to a set of lanes and it achieves a non-conflicting movement so that cars do not collide to one another. What is a traffic phase split? A traffic phase split is the time interval allocated for the traffic phase to change from one to another. Now, when does congestion happen? Congestion happens when traffic inflow to a certain intersection is more than the outflow than from the intersection. Then what is uh, cross blocking? Cross blocking is when the downstream is full and no vehicle can cross despite it having a green signal. Green idling when no vehicle is at the intersection when the green light is activated. Congestion works as a domino and as a single point of failure. When we have congestion in a certain intersection, we can be sure that the congestion will spread over to all of the neighboring intersections. The current state of the art optimizes on traffic signal scheduling. It extends the green light at the right moment and at each available phase occurs in a cycle. So what happens is we have a green light when we have a lot of traffic in a certain junction depending on our uh, long-term information and we cycle through all of the available phases and we cannot break that certain cycle of phase. But using reinforcement learning, the traffic phase can be lengthened, can be shortened or can even be skipped altogether. It is an online adaptive approach and it is dynamic to current and long-term traffic. Let's come to traditional RL algorithms. So in a traditional RL algorithm, we observe the current state, select an action based on the current knowledge of the environment and receive the delayed reward which may come after a few time steps. On analyzing this reward and action, we update the Q value or the knowledge value of the current environment. Now, how do we model this traffic signal control problem to a reinforcement learning problem? To start off, let's consider the challenges we have at hand. We have an inappropriate traffic phase sequence and an inappropriate traffic phase split, which we need to address. Let's now delve into the traffic network models. For the first, we have a single intersection traffic network, which basically means a single intersection and no intersection as its neighbor. The second is a multi-intersection traffic network where we have either two intersections or five intersections or we can have even more. Next, we have real world traffic network where we have a real world place like a city or a town as a traffic model. Or we have a grid traffic network which essentially is like the kind of road network we have in downtowns or even Manhattan of New York. It's basically a grid of, net a grid of roads forming a network. And the last is arterial with minus streets traffic network, 
which we can relate to as like a major street going across the like that certain certain area and smaller streets joining the major street at certain intervals next we have is traffic arrival rate we have traffic arrival rate in two ways in poisson based traffic arrival and real world traffic this is how we model the traffic arrival rate next we have a traffic signal control module a traffic signal control module can either be a centralized model or a distributed model the distributed model goes on with a global q scale q value optimization or a local q value optimization let's first come to the centralized model in a centralized model we have a central agent that gathers local statistics of the environment of the traffic around it from the distributed agents such as individual intersections or from cars it selects the action that optimizes system wide performance of best traffic flow and sends decisions back to the distributed agents which are the red lights in a certain junction or the traffic phases in a certain junction now the issues in a centralized model is that it is prone to a single point of failure is because when the central agent fails to work at certain given times we have a total chaos it has the curse of dimensionality as we have a exponential number of action state pairs and there is a communication overhead among all of the intersections and the central controller considering we if we have a real world scenario we have, we have a few thousand agents it's difficult to analyze traffic in that certain scenario next we have distributed model in which you have distributed agents such as each intersection the traffic phase at each intersection we have local statistics and its respective actions and a complex problem here is divided into smaller sub problems it improves robustness and scalability next we have traffic phases Here we come to reinforcement learning attributes for traffic signal control. Here for the agents, as we have already discussed, we can have traffic signal controller, a traffic phase split time, or the traffic movement in itself. For the states of the reinforcement learning agents, we can have the queue size of the vehicle skewing up to an intersection, the red timing, the current traffic controller phase, the traffic split phase which is the amount of time between the two traffic phases the physical position of the vehicle at an intersection and the physical position of the destination of a vehicle the two actions which the reinforcement learning agent can take is choose the next type of traffic phase which it will take and the traffic phase split which it needs to take the reward though is essentially to reduce the congestion but metrically speaking we would have variation of vehicle delay a waiting time appropriateness of green time and variation of queue size now let's come to the different reinforcement learning models which have been put into use and tests and discuss among them we have around five reinforcement learning models and i'll start here first we have the multi-agent reinforcement learning model or marl it considers multiple agents it and what we have here is that when we increase the agents, the number of agents, it blows up the number of state agent pairs. It enables agents to exchange information and it coordinates agents to achieve a global use value optimization. Where in traditional reinforcement learning, we try to achieve a local Q scale optimization where each agent tries to achieve the best that particular agent can possibly do here in marl we try to achieve a global q value optimization 
The challenge here is that the agent actions in a moving target at shared environment, the agent action affects the joint action of all the other agents and the action selected by agents at neighbor, neighboring intersections also affect the actions of this current agent. Agents share the information of the queue size and coordinate actions among themselves like the type of traffic phase to be active in the next time instant. We we'll try to reduce the red time and reduce the queue size. So here we have state is the queue size of the vehicles and the red time at a certain intersection. The action is the type of traffic phase that needs to be activated and the reward is the red time and the queue size of lanes. So the algorithm goes as follows as we observe the current state. It selects the action which returns the maximum queue value. It receives the queue size from the neighboring agent. It receives the total red time and calculates the delayed negative reward and updates the queue value for the next iteration and so on. Next we have is max plus reinforcement learning. It's quite similar to multi-agent RL and agents can learn about neighboring agents information like locally optimized payoffs. Agent calculates and maximizes some of locally optimized payoffs from itself from its own actions and it optimizes on the global queue value. Here the state is slightly different from MARL. Here the state has the queue size of the lanes of its own and its neighboring agents. It has the current traffic phase and also the traffic phase split information. An action which it takes is similar is that the type of traffic phase which it needs to be activated and the reward is the green signal activated when cross blocking occurs and during normal operation, the queue size created during the red and green signals and the delay caused during the red and green transition. Here we can state the algorithm in such a similar fashion, just we observe the current state, we calculate the global payoff and select the optimal action, we calculate the reward and update the queue value and we calculate the payoff message for each of its neighbors. Next, we come to model-based reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is traditionally a model-free approach, but in this case, we have created models to increase learning speed. Here, we try to compute transition probability using counters. Here, the probability of a current estimate in the next state, given a certain state action pair, is a positive counter and, vi and vice versa. Counters count the number of occurrences of an estimated next state given the current state action pair. Here we address the few challenges such as inappropriate traffic phase sequence and the inappropriate traffic phase split. We use a Bayesian approach to estimate the transition probability to the next traffic phase sequence and the reinforcement learning model is embedded in each vehicle. The traffic light controller gathers this information from all of the smaller agents which are the vehicles in that intersection and then does about its work. Now here the states which we have is the physical position of the vehicle waiting at an intersection, the physical position of the destination of the vehicle where it intends to be. The action is the current type of traffic phase, red or green light, and it is activated by a traffic signal controller. The reward is the flow rate of the traffic, the safety factor that is trying to avoid collisions, the average time of trips, and the average waiting time at the intersections. Now the algorithm here is divided into each vehicular agent and the traffic signal controller. For the vehicular agent, it observes the current state, it observes the current action, and updates the probabilistic models, the Bayesian probabilistic model that I had mentioned earlier. It receives the delayed reward after taking its action and sends a queue value signal to the controller. Now at the traffic controller, it receives this local queue value from each of its agents at its intersection and it selects an action, whether it should put a red light or a green light, thereby maximizing the queue value. Than the global queue value. 
Now we come to the active critic reinforcement learning model. The active critic reinforcement approach corrects the delayed reward using temporal difference and it is subsequently used to update the Q value in order to expedite the learning process. To achieve this, in the active critic reinforcement learning approach, the update of the Q value and the calculation of temporal difference procedures are separated. They are delegated to two different entities. The first is the critic which calculates the temporal difference and the actor calculates uses this temporal difference to update the Q value. The active critic reinforcement learning approach is used to address the challenge of inappropriate traffic splits in a single intersection traffic network and it uses a centralized model. Traffic is characterized by poison process and the active critic reinforcement learning model is embedded in each trans intersection. The procedure goes as follows as the critic calculates the temporal difference based on the value function. The temporal difference is used to cal in calculate improvement of the Q value and the actor uses this temporal difference to update the Q value for a state action paper. Here the state is the Q size and current traffic phase. The action is to either keep the, traffic, the current traffic phase or to change to the next traffic phase. And the reward is the average waiting time of all of its agents or the cars in this intersection. Here the algorithm is also divided into critic and actor. When the critic observes the current states, it selects the action based on the maximum Q value, it receives the delayed reward and calculates the temporal difference. The actor updates the Q value using the given temporal difference from the critic. Now we come to multi-step backup reinforcement learning. Traditionally, reinforcement learning selects an optimal action based on the current state. However, an action may affect a consecutive series of states. Multi-step backup reinforcement learning allows the agent to look backward so that a series of steps in an episode, which is in a sequence of time instance, taken into account and uses eligibility traces to achieve the average effects of the temporal difference. The eligibility trace initiates a short-term memory or trace of a state each time it is visited. Otherwise, it gradually decays over time. The challenges here is inappropriate traffic phase sequence and inappropriate traffic phase sequence. Here the state represents several bits of information, including the index of the current traffic phase with green signals activated, the time elapsed, and the maximum time of the traffic phase. The occupancy, or whether at least a single vehicle is waiting at an intersection of the current intersection and its neighboring intersections. And also the time gap between two vehicles at an intersection and between two vehicles at neighboring intersections. The actions is to either stay in the current traffic phase state or to change to the next traffic phase state. Both traffic phase and the traffic phase split are taken into account in the action. The reward is to reduce the average delay of the vehicles. So in the algorithm, what we have is that multi-step reinforcement learning model observes the current state it selects the action and for each time step from start to the current step, it receives delayed reward, it calculates the temporal difference, it calculates the eligibility traces and also finally updates the Q value. Next, we come to reinforcement learning with function approximation. Here, the reinforcement learning approach optimizes on the global system performance to address the challenge of inappropriate traffic phase sequence. The reinforcement learning is embedded in the central controller and any traffic signal controller can be made a central controller. Here the state is the Q size of the vehicles at, a partic at that particular intersection and the red time. And the action can be 
any type of traffic phase to be activated in the next time instant. The reward is the negative reward for the red line and the negative reward for the queue size of lanes. Here the algorithm goes as follows as that we observe the current state, we select action based with the maximum approximated queue value, receive the delayed reward, calculate temporal difference, change the turnable weight which represents impact of each feature and update the queue value. In conclusion, we can see that our challenges are intersection architecture and dynamic traffic update. Here we have formulated a traffic signal problem as a reinforcement learning problem as in the state action and reward. Here we have visited several reinforcement learning models and algorithms which have been there and published. Thank you for being patient. Any questions?